Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to start coding in Play Canvas to um, control objects in your game. So what I've got here um, just to get started is a basic scene. All right, so I have a camera, I have a directional light and I have a box and on that box I've applied a red colored material. So with the box, if we just have a look at that, <clears throat> it's kind of in the middle of my scene or nearly in the middle of my scene. And then the camera is pointing straight at that box. So if we move around behind the camera, you can see it's pretty much right in front of the box and it can see all the box straight in front of it. So if we click on launch and we preview what this looks like in the browser, we should see a red box um, right there. There we go. All right, excellent. So um, I don't really need to move anything around, but for this tutorial to work for you, just make sure that you've got a camera there and that whatever object you're gonna control, so maybe a box or a sphere or something like that, just make sure that it is in view of the camera. So if it's not in view, then you can move it around until um, you see it in the camera's view. All right, now to um, control this object, firstly, what we're gonna do um, is just get this object to move around by itself. So as soon as we start the game, this box is just going to start moving. So it might just start moving to the right or up or down or whatever. That's all we're going to do is get it to move on its own. So um, imagine that this box could be a character um, or just like another player in the game or um, some sort of animal or something walking around your scene. You might want it to just move around or um, hover or something like that. Um, or it might be something that you need to chase in the game. So Maybe you need to chase an object in the game. doesn't matter what it is. Um, we're just going to get it to move on its own. And in the next tutorial, then we'll look at using keyboard input to um, get something to move around when you press different keys on the keyboard. So get, get it to move up when you press the up arrow key or left when you press left arrow key and so on. All right, so I've got those three things, camera, directional light, and box. Now to code this, I need to add a script. So if you double click in the assets, Panel. If you double click on the scripts folder, that will load your scripts folder and that's where you should keep all of your scripts. So all of your code that you write will be in a script file or in more than one script file. You might have several scripts, but they should always be kept in the scripts folder just to keep things organized. All right, the next thing to do is to click on add asset and then script and you need to give your script a name. Now we're coding using the JavaScript programming language. So every script that you create needs to end in .js, which stands for JavaScript. So I'm gonna call this script move because it's gonna move the box, all right? So give it a descriptive name and then type in .js at the end. Um, and then you can hit enter. So when you've, uh, if you've given it a name, just like move, if you hit enter, it will probably automatically fill in the .js for you. And just hit enter again or return and that will create a JavaScript file okay now to get this script to work it actually needs to be attached to some sort of entity so this script I haven't told it what to do yet we haven't put any code in there but when we write the code it's going to be controlling this box all right it's not going to control the camera it's not going to control the light it's going to control the box so we can go to the box we can click on add component and then select script. All right, and then we could click on add script and choose this script, or we can just click and drag the script across to there. And now we can see that the move script is attached to um, the box, all right? So in order for a script to work, it has to be attached to something. And because it's controlling the box, um, we can attach it to the box and um, any code inside this script will be applied to the box. All right, so if we tell the script to move something, then it's gonna be moving the box, all right? So now what we can do is click on the script and click on edit, and that will bring up the um, code editor. All right, now in the last tutorial, we looked at a little bit of this code that you get at the start. All right, you don't need to worry about changing anything up here. But just remember that there's two different sections. There's initialize. So any code inside the initialize section, inside these two brackets, that will be called once. 
at the beginning of the game. So right at the start of the game, it will run whatever codes inside the initialize section and it won't run it again. Okay, and the next section is called the update section. And um, any code in the update section, so any code between these two brackets, will run over and over again constantly during the game. So it's called every single frame during the game. All right, and there can be several frames per second in the game. So this is where we're gonna put our code because we want this code to be running um, as soon as the game starts, but we want it to keep running after the game has started. So to kind of keep repeating. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make this um, script or this code, we're going to get it to move the cube or move the box. And we want it to start when the game loads and to keep doing that every frame, just keep moving the box until we can't see it anymore. So what we can do first is just tell this entity or the entity that this script is attached to, which is the box. We can tell that box entity to translate or to move um, to somewhere else. So to change position, all right? So to do that, we start typing this dot entity dot translate local. And as you type, it gives you suggestions on how to finish the line of code. So different keywords are used in the programming language. So we've got this dot entity dot translate local. Don't worry about this little message here saying that there's an error because we haven't finished this line of code yet. So we've got this dot entity translate local and then we put brackets, all right? It'll automatically put in the second bracket. Now inside these brackets, we need to put in some information. All right, there are some parameters. All right, in fact, there are three. There's X, Y, and Z. Okay, so we need to put three numbers in here. All right, we, what we are doing is we are translating or we're moving this box um, around the screen, every frame, okay? And so we need to specify how far we want this box to move in a single frame. All right, so the bigger the number, the further it will move, or the faster it will travel. The smaller the number, the slower it will move, or the um, it, it'll travel not quite as far. So um, we can specify a number for each axis, X, Y, and Z. So that's why we enter three pieces of information here separated by a comma. So the X axis is left and right. So we can start with X. And if we put a positive number, say 0.5, then it will move in a right direction. It'll move right because it's a positive number. So it'll move in a positive direction right on the x-axis. If we put in a negative number, it will move left. So negative number, it moves left on the x-axis. All right, now we'll make it, um, what we'll do is make it move right. So we'll make it a positive number, but we'll make it a very small number because it's going to be moving this much, 0.1. That's a measurement of how far it will be moving across the screen every single frame. And there's many frames in a second. So it's gonna actually, even though it's a small number, it's actually gonna move pretty fast. All right, the second number we need to enter in, so we, we put a comma in, and then the second part is the y-axis. So we can put a value for um, how, how far we want it to move each frame on the y-axis. So negative, it'll move down, a positive number, it will move up. Or if you don't want it to move on the y-axis at all, so you don't want it to go up or down, you can put in zero. And then lastly, after another comma, is the z-axis. So I'm gonna put in zero again because I only want it to move right, so I only want it to move on the x-axis, so I only need to specify a number for the um, x-axis. For y and z, I can just leave it at zero. And then I need to end my line with the semicolon. All right, so every instruction every statement or every line of code that you write in um, JavaScript, every separate statement should end with a semicolon, okay? You don't see semicolons everywhere in, um, in the code, like you don't see a semicolon here. Um, there's no semicolon here either, but when you write a single statement or instruction like this, you should end it with a semicolon, and then you could start a new line of code, and it will run this code in order. All right, so that's all I'm gonna put for now. Um, now this is probably gonna move pretty quickly, so I might even wanna make it a smaller value, um, like 0.05, all right? 
but we'll test it, we'll save it. So you can click on save or you can press Control S or Command S on a Mac. That's saved. So now I can go back to the editor and I can click on play and test it out. So it'll launch and just watch straight away as the game's finished loading. It should, the box should start moving to the right. There it goes. So if you weren't watching, you missed it. <laughs> so now what I'll do is I'll make that number a bit smaller. Might make it 0, 0.0 one this time, really small. Save it, go back and then launch it again. Now, whenever you make changes to the code, you have to relaunch the game so that it can update the script. There we go. So it's moving at a much slower speed this time across the screen and disappearing to the right hand side. Now we could go back to the code and we could keep that there. So we could have it moving on the X axis at 0.01. All right, that's how far it's moving each frame. It's, it's a positive number, it's moving right. We could maybe make um, it move down at the same time. So we can put a negative number on the y-axis here. So the second value, we could make it minus 0 0.1. All right, so it should start moving right. And at the same time, it should start moving down as well. So save, relaunch that. And let's watch what happens. So it should move right and down. There we go. I think I actually put 0 0.1 instead of 0 0.01. Yep, I did. So <laughs> change that, make it a smaller number. That's why it disappeared so quickly. Relaunch. There we go. All right, so it's moving right and down at the same time. So it's moving on an angle. And lastly, we might, um, we might change the z-axis to a positive number. 0. Uh, make, might make it a little bit bigger than the other numbers, 0. 0.05. So it's a positive number. So it should start moving away from us. Oh, or towards us actually, because it's positive. So positive, um, and it depends on which way you have the camera facing the object. So let's just close that and have a look at this because that brings up a good point. We've got the camera over here and it's facing the object over here. If you, um, if you move the camera over this way, all right, and then rotate it and turn it around, oops, just grab that green handle. Um, where are we? Okay, so there we go. All right, so let's have a look at the camera. I'll just rotate that camera around. It's a little bit uh, tricky to focus on the camera, but there we go. All right. So just so you can see how this works, if we rotate the camera and point it in the opposite direction and reload the game, now, instead of coming towards, um, instead of the box coming towards the camera and then going past it, it should go away from the camera. There we go. So before it was moving right and down at the same time and coming towards us. Now it's moving left and down at the same time and going away. So it's heading further into the distance and it will gradually become smaller and smaller until it disappears and it's too far away and you can no longer see it. So that's just something to be aware of. If you, um, as an example, make it a positive number on the x-axis and expect the box to move right and, it, and instead it moves left, it means that your camera is on the opposite side of the object, of the box. So what you can do is just move it away, move it across to the other side and then rotate it so it's looking back at it again. Okay? So, um, just make sure that your camera is facing the object in the same way. All right. Um, so I'm going to make this a negative number now on the Y axis and I'll save that code and run it again. And so this time now it should move right down and away, move forward at the same time. There we go. All right. So that's how to use JavaScript code to control an object and to move it around. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to use um, keyboard input so we can press keys on the keyboard 
to make the object move around instead. And then we'll look at later on how to um, use code to rotate an object or to change its size. Um, and then further on from that, we'll be looking at how to actually interact with objects and get things to clash and um, interact with each other or collide. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.